Hello and welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we are going to start a two-part lesson on quantum numbers. It's a little too much for one lesson, so we'll, we'll take our time and, and break it up. Uh, quantum numbers are, are really an electron's address. Now again, the quantum atom, the quantum model that we've been talking about recently, is a very weird model. And so I, I do uh, warn you to avoid trying too hard to visualize uh, this uh, as, a, as, a, as a classic model, like a planetary model. Remember that a lot of this stuff is based on complex mathematics, uh, but we will try to find uh, some visual metaphors where we can, um, or some explanations where we can, but uh, again, some of this just ends up being a little weird. But in the end, it just ends up being a code, um, and that's why we have the quantum rangers to help us uh, determine these codes. So really, um, what you should be able to do by the end of quantum numbers uh, is understand how the codes cascade. There are four quantum numbers, and the codes sort of cascade off each other. And then you should be able to look at a set of quantum numbers and determine whether or not it is a legitimate quantum number address. Now, you won't be able to do that at the end of the first lesson, but by the end of the second lesson, you should. So if, if someone was trying to figure out where you lived, um, and they're from another planet, and you some, for some reason met in the middle of space, you'd probably start broad and then work into a general sort of thing and say, hey, listen, I live on the Earth, and then you'd work down from there. Just like if someone asks where you live, you'd probably say something like, hey, I live in, I live in Pittsburgh. And they're like, oh, okay, I know Pittsburgh. And then you say, oh, okay, I live here and then here and then here, and then become more and more specific till they get to your house. And for electrons, you can do the same thing in an atom, and it only takes four steps. Just like the old TV show, uh, guess that tune. I can I can guess an electron's address in four notes, and the the four addresses, the four parts of the component are uh, n, l, m sub l, and m sub s. L is not a uh, number one. It's not an i. It's a cursive lowercase l. And so what we're going to do is work through what each of these mean. All right. And so we should again at the very least be able to figure out what's the legitimate uh, quantum number and what isn't. And so again, today what we'll do is we'll start with the first two. And oh, oh, oh crazy koala. There he is. Hi, not there. And so again, we want to be able to hunt down renegade electrons by figuring out what quantum numbers are not legitimate. And so n is the easiest of the quantum numbers uh, because it refers to the energy level. Uh, and most people kind of understand the concept of an energy level in an atom. And the idea is really how far away from the nucleus do you live. Now there's a code for n, but it's a very simple code. It's just any positive integer. So you could have any value for n you want, as long as, again, it's not a half number or zero or negative. And this goes on. Now, we don't need that many n's to cover the electrons in the ground state of any atom. But if we want to have excited states, then n can go quite far, technically all the way to infinity. Um, any, uh, and once you have the same n, um, you're considered to be in the same energy level, or some people say electron shell. It all, it's all terminology. And the, and the higher value for n, the farther away from the nucleus you are, therefore the higher potential energy you have. So electrons in the second energy level have more energy than electrons in the first energy level. And so if you want to have sort of a, a metaphor, then you can imagine like the nucleus is a town center in the bottom of a valley. And the ends are the streets that kind of cut their way uh, up the mountains. And so uh, each street is higher and higher up the mountain. So it's a pretty simple analogy. So what street you live on. Obviously it would take a lot more energy to climb up to a street much farther away. And the second uh, quantum number that we're going to talk about is what we call the second quantum number. <laughs> it's a lowercase l. And it designates what type of orbital you live in. Now remember, we, we define orbital as where electrons live. You can have up to two electrons living in an orbital. And an orbital is a, is a region of space where there's a 90% chance of finding an electron. And so uh, L cascades off of N, which means that uh, you can have any L uh, from 0 to N minus 1, N being the energy level you're on. So if you're on energy level uh, 1, then the only L available to you would be 0. And that represents a certain type of orbital. That orbital is S. And so you can always have an S orbital. We never actually use the numeric values for these. We always go straight to the, to the letters. So, um, 
And on the second energy level, then, you could have uh, 0 or 1, because n minus uh, 1 if n is 2 is 1. So you could have 0 or 1, which means you could have a 0 or a p. And then on the third, you could have a, z a 0, 1, or 2, which is an SPD. And then, a, and then 4 and beyond, you can have SPD and F. And you, you won't get any orbitals beyond F. And so S uh, represents a spherical orbital. It's the lowest energy. Consider it like a subdivision. It's the closest one on the street. So this would be the first subdivision you hit on any, any street, and every street has an S orbital. All right? And then as you went beyond the first energy level, then you have always have an S orbital where electrons can live, and, but then you also have three P orbitals. All right, and each of those can hold two electrons. P, you can imagine, uh, represents the word peanut, or dumbbell-shaped, and they're, they're along the different axes, x, y, and z. And again, orientation isn't all that important right now. Just understand that there are three P orbitals that start to show up at the second energy level and beyond. And by the way, anything with the same n and l, meaning the same energy level and, and second quantum number, is considered the same subshell. And that's a very important term to understand, subshell. So uh, on the second energy level, you have a P subshell that holds three orbitals. And then as you get farther and farther away on the third energy level, you start getting D subshells on top of the S and P. And then on the fourth energy level and beyond, you start getting uh, F subshells. Uh, and, and they end up being very crazy shapes. And again, you don't have to memorize these shapes. You should probably visually recognize whether or not something's an SP, D, or F. And that's pretty easy to do just based on the complexity of the uh, region of space that occupies the electron. Um, but uh, imagine it's sort of like the kind of house that you live in. So you've got uh, every, every street can have an S. Uh, from the second street on, you can start having the P subdivision. At the third street, you start getting the D subdivision, and at the F, you start getting the, uh, I mean, on the fourth energy level, you start getting the F subdivision. And again, this gets very hard to visualize. So imagine that each of these is centered on the nucleus, all right? And then uh, sort of like Russian nesting dolls, they start overlapping over each other, and you have these weird regions of space where you have a 90% probability of finding an electron. And that's why it's not a visual model. <laughs> so that's enough for today. Uh, next time what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk uh, about the last two and we'll introduce that concept of, of the Pauli uh, exclusion principle. So uh, we've definitely gotten over the tough stuff, uh, so the second part shouldn't be too bad. So see you next time. Have a great day.